Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. We've got an unboxing today of four guitars. Some of them kind of interesting, other ones just kind of finishing up some stories. Well, let's just start with this one. <laughs> now, if I remember correctly, this is like the guitar that I've been searching for for the past year, ever since I knew it existed. And I've actually already documented the model, but this is like a very rare iteration of it where it has different pickup configuration. I mean, it's technically an inferior guitar to the one I've already done, but at the same time, it's cooler with a wrap tail piece. Now watch, it's not that guitar and I've just pumped it up for nothing. Now, this box definitely took a beating. It's probably about ready to be retired, I would say. But they did a pretty good job packing it here with some nice materials. Good old Gibson Custom Art Historic. You know that's like a mid to late 90s model if you get a case like this. And honestly, that's a really cool period for Gibson because that's when the custom shop was finally birthed. That's when they started doing historics. I mean, just a lot of cool stuff from a historic perspective. But this one is a little bit less than usual. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Oh, I found it, guys. Oh my gosh. This is strange. In person, this is a really light blue color. But looking up here, I can actually see in my monitor, that's coming through as like a very dark blue. This is like a strange bluish green in person. That's interesting. So this is another one of those DC Pros. They get that weird snake head head stock that very few models of Gibson had. But this is the version that has the P90 pickups. There we go, now that color's really showing off. So I only saw a few of these things on Google image searches. And ever since I reviewed that last one, I knew I had to find this because I'm a P90 guy. So I love the P90 pickups. That's a great upgrade for me. I mean, the wrap tail piece, I mean, is technically inferior, but there's nothing inferior about this color or top, geez. So this is like the birthing model of the Les Paul double cut. This came one year before the standards came out. So I'll do a full review and demo on this one looks like uh, it, it came okay. I forget. I think it came from Norway or something overseas. I don't remember. Other thing I'm noticing is this is ridiculously lightweight. So the hunt is over on this one. Now I just gotta eventually find time to do the review. Now that we've got this cool one done, let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor. And the sponsor of today's episode is Gothic.com, without the O, the manly man's jewelry. <laughs> so this is actually the second episode they sponsored. If you remember last time, they sent me some of these. Like we had the skull ring, we got this black dragon holding a jewel. Then we have some movie inspired rings right here. But my all time favorite has to be this little skeleton cowboy guy. <laughs> it's just so funny to me with his little boots and brass hat. So that's why I just leave him up here. But they decided to sponsor a second episode here and send me some more samples of their products. So you can check them out. I'll leave a link in the description and you can use coupon code TROGLY20 at checkout if you are interested in purchasing anything from their site. They've got some interesting designs and some kind of wonky designs. So, you know, I mean, there's something for everybody here. So it looks like this time we get two medium boxes, a large box and three smalls. Starting off here. Ooh, this is like a... <laughs> <laughs> this kind of reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh, but I think they're going for the Egyptian theme here. This one sounds like there might be a pendant in it. Oh, okay. This is the uh, the dragon head I think I asked for. That's definitely got a lot of detail to it. That definitely does the job. Number three here. What is it? Ooh. This one just kind of has like an emerald within it and... Uh, is that a snake head? Oh, nice, nice. I did not see that at first. There's little snake eyes that they also have the little emerald-like stone in it. Surprise number four. Looks like uh, some sort of a chain. Or a little dragon chain, that's interesting. If I can get him out of his little shedding his skin. <laughs> I like that it opens his little mouth and he goes, and bites his own tail. That That's ingenious design. And is this another chain? I don't know. It sounds like it's going to be something a little different. Whoa. Oh, this reminds me of uh, Legend of Zelda, the original one. The Floor Masters, I think they're called. They come off the side of the screen and they getcha! 
But it has like a, a re oh, okay. This is the one that has the eye. I think I asked for this one. Now, this is the other Legend of Zelda game. But you also see one of these in uh, Super Mario 64. So that's why I thought, you know, that's kind of cool. Video game references. I like it. And our last one here. Did they send me the fairy pendant? I doubt it. That thing's expensive. It's like 450 bucks. Looks like uh, just a simple band. Is this from Lord of the Rings? Is that the elvish stuff that they have on here? Might be. So as always, you can check that link in the description and you can use coupon code TROGLY20 if you're interested in purchasing any of these items. I feel like Ozzy Osbourne or something now. <laughs> I'm completely bedazzled. Moving on here, three of them. Let's wrap up this story. So this is the replacement of that damaged Karina Explorer. It kind of took, I think, what, about a month for them to get a new stock in, but thankfully they weren't completely done with these because I was worried that we were gonna just be out of luck because that one got damaged and they stopped doing the run. So inside here, I wonder why that felt weird. It's kind of like bulging the size of the box, but they've got this double box situation going on here. Now let's just hope this one's not also damaged. Because I guess there's a bunch of other YouTubers that have also done reviews on this model. And for whatever reason, Epiphone Explorers are just cursed. Here's hoping that second time's the charm. Because last time we got some pretty nice wood grain. We'll have to see what we got this time. Uh-oh. You know... I think that's what did it in last time. That collapses right there and then it falls and hits. Guess there's only one way to find out. This one's actually got some light figuring within it. Like it dances around a lot. So I think we did better on this one. It almost looks like they put some sort of veneer on top. Well, I'll darn. It looks like we got some sort of a ding down here. <laughs> Man, we just can't win on these guys. How's our neck? That's looking okay. And how's our headstock? We got a little bit of finish checking there again. So I'll have to check with the buyer on this one if he thinks that's acceptable. Otherwise, I don't know, maybe we'll have to try again. I would definitely like to get him a perfect one, but it just seems these explorers, they are hard to get right. I would never personally buy an Epiphone Explorer after the horrors I've had on my past three. To make matters even worse on this one, I found another ding on the treble side. And oh my goodness, the official Epiphone case. It doesn't even come close to fitting. <laughs> Things just can't go right on here. I'm not sure if this case is like a QC anomaly or if maybe this particular model explorer is bigger than other explorers. But this was meant for a 58 style explorer, so uh, I guess we gotta return these and maybe find something else. The saga continues. Um, I don't know what's in this one. I <laughs> honestly do not know. Oh, I think it's a, a Les Paul Custom. I think both of these are actually customs. You know, if you've been following my channel a long time, Les Paul Custom used to be like every day I'd be showing you a different custom and a different finish because I just love the 70s and 80s customs. I've yet to find one that's like an absolute dog. It's kind of the reputation that Norland era guitars used to have. But I can really only think of like one or two models that I didn't really like. One was the Les Paul Pro. It was just so heavy and kind of dead sounding, but that just might've been a bad example. And then I'm not a huge fan of the Gibson Sonics model, but they're good depending on what you're using them for. And the survey says Gen 3 chainsaw case. So that puts us in the 80s. Well, unless it's a non-original case, that is. Where's our badge? Somebody stole our badge or it just fell off at some point in time. I don't believe I was told about that. I'm a little bit sad. But let's see what is inside. Wow, that's really vibrant. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of Cherry Sunburst, but I just haven't had a lot of customs and people are like, hey, I want to buy a custom. Do you have one? It's like, no, I don't. <laughs> So I try to pick them up. I mean, this is more just a, a wheeling and dealing type thing, but this just kind of takes me back to my roots here. So what is this? Just by looking at things, this is pretty chunky body. 
Um, you've got the pancake body, so it's probably a 76. Yep. I was told this was marked a factory second. Well, that's a good topic that we could talk about here. Factory seconds, does it actually matter and what exactly does it mean? A factory second in this era means it had a very small finish blemish on it somewhere. So let's see, like maybe this impression line, I'm not sure if you guys can see it here, it was there at the factory or maybe there was like a small ding right here on the neck at the factory. That would be enough to get it marked as a second. Also, employee guitars would be marked as seconds. That way they couldn't resell them or say that they have some sort of a warranty when they shouldn't actually have it. But what does it mean today on the secondhand used market? Whenever somebody asks me that question, I usually say it doesn't actually affect the value. It just affects who's willing to purchase that guitar. So you might have to slightly discount it like five to 10%, but honestly, it's not a huge deal. But that's a really thin neck on this guy. This kind of still has that pre-75 spec to it. So I'm wondering if this one was actually made in Kalamazoo because it's kind of hard to tell in this era when they're using these decal serial numbers. So you got to look at the side marker dots and yep, we've got the tortoise shell and we've got the bone nut. So yeah, that's cool. This is a Kalamazoo made 76. That's actually really rare. I did not know that. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a woohoo with this guitar and a little bit of awe, but that's got a nice iridescent back to it. It's just some light wear and tear. I'm very happy with this purchase. That's a big plus coming from Kalamazoo because those kazoo guitars, they just feel a little bit different. Usually they have slightly chunkier necks, but this one, it's got those like 75 specs to them. That was a pretty good little unboxing haul. I think I'll save that one for next time though, because that's another Les Paul custom that I've been looking for. So I'm going to leave you guys with the cliffhanger <laughs> until next unboxing episode. Starting off our packing journey this time. You know, I used to be sad when I have to pack these things up, but I always know deep down in my heart now that I'll always get another one, a Buckethead Signature Les Paul. My favorite modern era Gibson Les Paul because Buckethead has that extended 27 inch scale length on these guys. So it's a baritone guitar. It's oversized, it's chambered, it does the coil splitting stuff. It's got kill switches. This one's a little bit worn. It's had some replaced parts. Somebody went crazy with paint, but I did not realize this when I bought it. The original pickup's actually still in here. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. After the unboxing, I opened this up and I was like, oh, because I was getting ready to cannibalize an SG baritone to restore this one. But since that was in there, I just decided to list it as is because, I mean, those are easy to replace. The only thing I'm a little bit uncertain of is if you can actually swap out these to the original Schallers again without leaving at least a little bit of an impression from these Spurzels. But honestly, these are still locking tuners too. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, the red, it kind of goes with the whole bucket head vibe. I didn't think it was an egregious type of modification. I don't know. Another fun fact here, this guitar is going to join my old Cobra Burst guitar. So let's get this one packed up and don't worry, I'll find another one. Now this guitar kind of has a funny, sad story behind it. <laughs> I bought this thing like almost a year ago, mainly to be a comparison piece for the SG exclusive. And when I ended up filming it, I decided to just scrap that entire segment because it was just too confusing because this was an 80s SG that had completely different specs compared to the SG exclusive. Things like the side output jack, the toggle switch location, it just would have got too confusing for the viewers. So it's like, ah, held on to this guitar for a year for no real good <laughs> reason. Oh well, it ended up selling. I vaguely remember unboxing this one and being a little bit upset about finding this like very small finish crack. So I went ahead and sold it as like an actual crack and priced it accordingly, but I'm not really sure. It's probably just a ding, but let's go ahead and get this guy packed up and onto its new home where it can be loved and played.
These pickups need packed up now. Uh, not too much of a story behind these guys. I just bought them because I know how hard it is to find these things. So when I do find them with the gold covers, now to find tarbacks with the chrome or nickel covers, that's not as rare because that would have came out of an SG. But for them to be gold, they either came out of an SG custom or they came out of like a Les Paul Artisan. Sometimes other three pickup Les Pauls can also have the tarbacks, but that's kind of an anomaly. Kind of a rare part that somebody apparently needed not too long after I listed these things. Now we've got a pack of one of these Epiphones. What's inside this one? Yeah, it looks like the Les Paul Muse. So I actually kind of enjoyed this guitar, though I would probably still lean towards the Les Paul Modern. I think it really comes down to uh, what types of colors you like on your guitars. I mean, do you like something that's got all this fancy finishing and sparkly metallics? And I think it was, what, seven color options? So quite the striking guitar for the price point. I know, despite playing Muse songs, this is not officially endorsed by Muse or anything. I guess Matt Bellamy actually has his own guitar brand or something like that. So it was kind of a, a little bit cheeky for them to use that name, I think. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Visit our sponsor, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.